let a, b, and c be sets, and c not equal to the empty set. Prove that if a cross c is equal to b cross c, then a is equal to b. Proof. So this is an if-then statement. So we start by assuming that this piece here is true, and then we have to show that this piece here is true. So we'll start by writing suppose that a cross c is equal to b cross c. And now we have to show that a is equal to b. So claim that a is equal to b. So we'll do this using the method of double inclusion. We'll show that they are both subsets of each other. So let's start by showing that a is a subset of b. So I'll do that by indicating the little subset symbol and putting a colon here. So we're going to show A is a subset of B. So we'll start by taking an element in capital A. So take any little a in capital A. And now we somehow have to show it's in B. So in order to do that, uh, I suppose we have to use our hypothesis. So we need an element in A cross C. This is where the non-emptiness of C comes into play. Since C is non-empty, there exists, the symbol for exist, little c in capital C. So then this means that the element little a comma little c is an element in a cross C, which is equal to B cross C. So this means that A comma C is an element in B cross C. In particular, this means that little a is in capital B. Right, because the first entry belongs to the first factor of the cross product, direct product. So, or Cartesian product. So we have an element in capital A, and that element is also in B. So every element in capital A is in capital B. So this shows that A is a subset of B. Let's go the other way. Let's let's prove the other direction. So I'll use this here to indicate that we're showing the other direction. We're going to show that B is a subset of A. It's going to be the same same argument. So take any little b in capital B. And then again, since C is non-empty, there exists some little c in capital C. Then we can look at B comma C. That's an element in the Cartesian product B cross C, which is equal to A cross C. So this implies that little B comma C is an element in A cross C. And again, in particular, this means that little B is in capital A. So we started with the little b in capital B, and we showed it was in capital A. So every element of b is an element of A. So thus, we've shown that b is a subset of A. So since A is a subset of B, and B is a subset of A, we have that A is equal to B. And that completes the proof. I hope this video has been helpful.